Welcome to another edition of the Wonderberry Podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Dave. And you can find us online at wonderberry.com sometimes. Yeah, you can find me online at Open Darkwing even rarely. <laughs> you can cash me outside. Wait, oh, yeah, that's an old meme. Wow. We are throwing way back. Is that what the kids say these days? I have no fucking clue what the kids say these days. <laughs> I should know because I found out that half of my class, my Photoshop class, was born the same year my oldest kid was. So <laughs> the, uh, the professor is enjoying kind of taking the mick out of me over that one every once in a while. Because he'll mention something that happened older, and he's like, no one here except maybe Dave will know what this is about. I'm like, God damn it, dude. Just, you know, why, why do you have to do me like that? Are you saying I'm old? Yep. And he goes, no. And like three other people are like, yes. <laughs> but it's been good. So I think we should probably start off by uh, talking about the elephant in the room. We missed an episode. That's why I said, "Cash me outside." You want to come? I'll, I'll fight you about it. I have a feeling that it was mostly my fault. I'm, I'm actually going to take full blame for that. Okay. So, we 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 talked. I think last time we we were on, we talked about how I kind of spooked myself with, "Oh shit, I have school now." Mm-hmm. So trying to get back into everything, I, 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 I screwed up. Um, I was like, well, I can, you know, like my Photoshop professor was very, he's very much like, you know, work at your own pace type of a thing, you know, just get things done. He's recording the session. So I was like, half listening to him and half just trying to focus on other stuff. And then I went and looked at my assignments and I realized that I had three assignments that were due all at the same time. And I had done fuck all with them and I hadn't really paid attention in class to understand what I was doing with it. <laughs> Cause one thing I've learned about taking a Photoshop and illustrator class is that being self-taught will teach you quick and dirty ways of getting things done it does not give you the best practices for getting things done. And mm -hmm. therefore you're like learning Photoshop. My, my, my brother put it this way. He says, you're, you were doing this stuff in hard mode. Yeah. Meaning I, I, I didn't know the proper ways to do things, which was already frustrating enough, but even more on top of that, um, the ways that I knew how to do things was the most inconvenient, roundabout, terrible way of doing anything ever. So, I'm finally learning how I'm supposed to do this. Yep. That being said, I had, if you take out the two days that I have classes, because I pretty much have classes eight hours a day, I'm in lecture style eight hours a day, two days a week. I had a Monday and a Wednesday to get everything turned in, like three or four projects turned in that Thursday. And then I had a whole bunch of stuff I had to do Friday for my other class that was a big project. So, <laughs> to, and then Saturday, this last weekend, was Saturday I was gone at a nephew's birthday party. Then Sunday was Father's Day. We were talking about doing a live stream on Father's Day, but I didn't get home till like 9 p.m. It just, it became a whole thing to where my screwing up screwed us both up. And so, yeah. That's, that's kind of the story of that. However, I did manage to get through because the Zoom playback does have 2x speed. So I was able to listen to my professor on 2x speed and scrub through his rabbit trails. 
I've been learning a lot. I've created some really cool stuff. I haven't even sent you the, the thing I did yesterday. But the professor has also, he likes the way we've been picking up information quicker now. And so he has worked into finishing the lectures with like an hour and a half left of class so that we can do project time in class time. Which is widely phenomenal. Because it means I can do a lot more. But yeah. Cool. Possibly. I would like to do some live episodes at some point. You went like yeah. speed mode on that, that talking there for a second. I wonder if you're having issues. But yeah, no, it's uh, class though has been going good. I'm finally caught up. So now I feel like I've got more of a handle and I can kind of slow things down a little bit and do a bit better and be a bit better. So, cool. yeah, I can actually get back into uh, a routine again. Yeah. That had what? absolutely nothing to do with me breaking my laptop charger and not being able to do the editing. Oh, that's this week's. <laughs> that's why we're recording on a Friday and not on a Wednesday. Well, that was that was part of it last week too. We could have we could have probably snuck one in, but I didn't have the ability to do the edit. Yeah, this this one. I'm hoping won't be late, but might be a couple days late, depending on when your charger gets in. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're making you... I'm still going to make you do the edit, because I won't be around tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, that should be interesting. That's not hard. So, it's going to be a I shitty made it edit. so I can do it, Dave. Yeah, but you you actually know what you're doing with Reaper. That's not the issue. Oh, yeah, it we is. got this. We got this. You better be staying on the line with me and helping me, walking me through it then. Mm hmm. So we've also talked about from the beginning of or the end of last year. You've heard us talk about AV1 quite a bit. Mm hmm. And I was voicing frustrations with Intel drivers and OBS and not being able to record native AV1. That I was having to record in MP4, MP5, and then when I exported it in Resolve, I could export it out in AV1. Well, I'm yeah. happy to report that I fixed that this morning. Nice. Sort of. <laughs> So, and I also learned something about Windows 11, and I don't know if this is the same true in older versions of Windows. I know that I don't, I know that I couldn't, I don't think I could have done this in 7, but I don't know about 10. So, OBS puts out a signal for encoding capabilities on any currently active GPUs, and that's how they fill the encoding area. Meaning that having a dormant GPU just sitting there for encoding only causes problems, as in it can't read that I can actually encode. Hmm. So my solution that I have now come up with, and I this was after reading hundreds of posts that were all, it was one of those things that it was, there was a very old version of the driver that sort of worked. And so everyone's go-to was just roll back the driver to like 14 drivers ago. I'm like, no, that's not a solution because that causes <laughs> other problems elsewhere. One or two drivers I can understand 14 right out. Yeah. It's no, that's not happening. 
So as I've been poking around and I realized this and a few other people have said that, you know, it's not working in active. I was like, you used to not be able to have monitors that run off of different GPUs at the same time. You either could run your monitors off of one or the other. That's not true anymore. Huh. So I have a small, tiny, I think it's like a seven inch HDMI monitor, right? Yeah. And it's plugged into my Intel GPU, which then shows up in Windows as like a third monitor that I could place off somewhere. And this is actually, I'm thinking that this is going to help me even more with being able to dedicate more processes to a single monitor while having a multi-monitor setup. Anyway, so now the GPU is active because it's actively showing a desktop. Windows, you can assign, you know, Windows re records it as that monitor is being run off of my Intel A380 and these two monitors are being run off my, my, uh, my RTX 2070. And I'm like, okay, this is different. I didn't know you could do this. And lo and behold, OBS, because now there's an active monitor, sees that, oh, there's hardware encoding on this thing. And I now have the ability to record AV1. Hmm. Such a weird, wonky workaround, though. <laughs> but I, that was something I did not know. And I don't know when they implemented that, if it's just been around forever and I didn't know. But I didn't think that you could run two GPUs of different types running st stuff on them at the exact same time. Had no yeah. freaking clue. Huh. Did not know that was possible whatsoever. So now I'm, I, now I'm thinking, well, I don't like this having this little third monitor because it's not really good for anything. But what happens if I plug my second monitor into the Intel? And that way, the only thing that my main GPU has to drive is my widescreen monitor and nothing else. That would save up a ton of resources. Yeah. So I'm going to be playing around with that. But that was a really cool thing. I didn't know... And like I said, maybe I just, it's been like that forever and I didn't know about it, but I was fairly sure that I had read or seen somewhere that you used to not be able to do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's interesting. Your reaction to it was the, huh, that works makes me think that you used <laughs> to not be able to. Yeah. Because if you would have come back and been like, well, of course it, it works that way, then I would have been like, okay, then I'm just stupid. But the fact that you kind of came back with a, huh, that works, makes me yeah. think that I was stupid. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't have a dual monitor thing now, but I think when I did... I don't think I could get it to run off a of two. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I don't know, but you know, <laughs> I I go into my display settings because you can look at you can like all right, there's multiple displays and all this stuff, and I go to the advanced display to see the you know in display information and refresh rate. And this one, Display 1, con connected to Intel Arc A380 graphics, running it, I'm running it right now at 1280 by 720 at 60 hertz, because that way, like right now, all I have over there is my NZ cam or NZXT cam, which is, uh, it monitors all my processes. So I can kind of look at how, what my GPU is doing, my CPU load, my RAM load, and all that stuff. <laughs> and that's running over there just fine. It shows up in my display settings as a third monitor that I just kind of poke off to the side, like up my second and then across. But it works just fine. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. And That's pretty awesome, though. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's if if it works that way just fine and I can actually run my main second monitor off of a second GPU altogether and then I can just drive one GPU to drive my games and drive everything else and I have to worry about pushing pixels to a second monitor. Dude, that's amazing. Mhm. Like on a system resources side, especially when recording or streaming or something, that's game changing. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Hmm. Hmm. So, who knows? <laughs> yeah. I I was I was pretty excited about finding that out. <laughs> Oh yeah. It's summer. It's yeah. a drought. Air quality is absolute garbage. Is it? Ours isn't bad. Ours has been well, let's see what it was. Well, ours ours was also there for a while, like the fourth worst city in the US for like a week straight. Yeah. We've been into, like, 60s to 80s. Uh, We were at 120 at one point. It was was bad. Oh, we're good (laughs) right now. Hell yeah, we're down to 28 right now. Nice. I mean, the PM 2.5 concentration, which is the pollen. Yeah, that's Uh, usually pretty um, high. Or pollutant, PM 2.5 pollutant. Air pollen level is good, so that's the AQI. Uh, well, overall AQI is twenty eight, but the yeah. PM two point five right now is uh, about one and a half times the World Health Org- Organization's annual air quality guideline value. <clears throat> but it's supposed to get pretty bad again. It looks like they're they're guesstimating because when storms roll through, it like pulls. It's pulling that dust or that. Uh, all that smoke behind it. So we're supposed to be getting a bit of weather on, you know, over the weekend. And then on Tuesday, I thought, um, maybe up there down here, it's supposed to be just be kind of bleh. Hmm. Um, but on Tuesday, they're estimating we're going to be skyrocketing up over a hundred again. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we ever broke a hundred here. It's been but bad. We do we I am surrounded by shit tons of trees. <clears throat> Let's see. On the ninth of June we were at one sixteen. We were one twenty on the seventh of June. We were one twenty six on the sixth of June. One eighteen on the fifth, so that, that week of the fifth, sixth, and seventh. We were up over 120. Hmm. That was, yeah. And then even like uh, last weekend, Friday and Saturday, we were over 100. But we're good for right now, so we'll see what happens. Does that mean you're going to get out and do some grilling? Um, I'm actually going to be doing some tomorrow. I have to find out when the, uh, when all this shit's supposed to start, because I might have to change up what I was doing. <laughs> I, I did the big breakfast. Saturday is supposed to be partly cloudy. Yeah, have you cooked anything else on that yet? No, not. Um, I did like hamburgers and hot dogs really fast. Just really, yeah. it's so convenient just to flip it on and cook something. I'm, I think I'm going to do um, fried rice tomorrow, though. Oh? Yeah. Get your rice made up. Yeah, I'm going to do that today. Um, my dad and brother and my step nephew are going to be coming over tomorrow 
And we're going to be clearing out that weeping tree that's in the front yard. We're going to get rid of that. Um, the bushes in front of the house. And we have like a pine thing that we hate. Um, we're going to be getting rid of all that tomorrow. So we're mm. utilizing dad's truck and trailer and hauling that out. Assuming that it's not raining. I have to figure out when it's supposed to start storming tomorrow. Um, yeah. We're, so yeah, we're that saying, was the plan. This. And then after we were done, I was going to cook fried rice. Cool. And then we're saying that because what did you get yourself, Dave? Well, yeah, I got myself a Blackstone. Yeah. Um, Dave joined the Blackstone family. I was doing grilling. I was cooking something at the end of last week. I think it was like last Friday or something. And I, uh, I looked down and where, so you have the tunnels where the flames kind of go through and, you know, even out the flames and they, you know, you turn them up and down or whatever. So they were down as low as they could go. And the front area for the front portion, it looked like all those connectors had split because it was just shooting flames out the sides of them. And I was like going, this doesn't seem or feel very safe. I think it's probably a good idea that I, uh, I figure something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blackstone's been a pretty so good choice, huh? We, uh, we kind of poked around a little bit, went to Walmart and picked up a 36 inch four zone Blackstone. And yeah, it's awesome. I love, I love it. Yeah. I knew that I was going to go away from the traditional grill into a black, into a griddle top anyway. Um, because, 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 oh, there's just so much you can do more. You can do with it. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah. you know, it's, it does everything that a grill can do with the exception of flame crisping, flame broiling. If you mm -hmm. like the taste of the flame. But you don't really get that same taste with gas that you do with charcoal anyway. So yeah. there's no real there's no real big benefit to it outside of it just being there, I guess. Yeah. And with the griddle top, there's just there's so much stuff you can make. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to be doing fried rice. That You never could do that mm -hmm. with a grill. Nope. I mean, you might be able to put something on a grill to make it into a griddle top, but even those aren't that great or that big. Hey, when you do when you do your fried rice, do you know how to make an egg roll? Nope. You push it. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, man. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> make, make sure you tell your dad and brother that when they're there tomorrow. Uh, I'll have to remember to do that. Yeah, put it. See, that's that's the that's one of the best parts about like cooking on the grill is being able to do things and have the jokes. So you could like set your egg on the on the griddle and be like, "Hey, do you know how to make an egg roll?" And then you like you could actually push it with the spatula. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to be cooking a bunch of rice today and then, like, watching a couple of videos. I think you sent me a recipe and instructions on how to do fried rice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to watch a couple of videos don't, of people doing it a couple of times. No, don't watch any videos. Just use my instructions. How detailed are All they? All the videos, they're, they're fairly detailed. They're not complicated. The, all the videos I've seen are just meh. And they they do some of the things. I The way I set my, my rice procedure up was to do it as similar to how I do it in the walk as possible. Yeah. You know, so it's you cook the egg first, then you get that to the side. And then, like, you get your meat veggies in. Like, in the in the walk... I cook the eggs, I take the eggs out, put them in a bowl. 
and then in the wok I go in with with my onions and garlic. And then I go in with like once they get a little translucent, I go in with the meat. I go in with veggies, seasoning, like sesame oil and stuff on there. And then once that starts to get cooked, then I add in the rice. I add the egg back in. And then like the one of the keys with doing fried rice in the wok is like you you pour your soy sauce around the outside edge of the wok where it's hot and it doesn't have food on it. Yeah. So that as it rolls down into the bottom of the wok, it's going to start to caramelize and like release more flavor from the soy sauce. And that's something I see people do. They dump like dump their soy sauce right into the rice. And it won't do that because the rice starts to absorb it right away. And that'll that's it's just like a couple of little tricks that'll just like completely amplify. So when you say make a well in the middle, what does that mean? Uh so like push push everything outwards. So like if you've got it all in a pile. So you know, it's like pile. so it's just the bare you you're making like a, a donut shape with the rice all around with nothing in yeah. the middle. Okay. Yeah. See, you you said make a well. I looked at that as like uh like a volcano top where you just kind of create a little divot. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there so is make... a difference between the two. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't word it so well, but you got there. And then the other question that I had is how many eggs to how much rice? I do one egg a person. And then I always make more rice than I need because I just add the rice in until it looks like a good mix. Yeah, I, almost, I have. I almost I've always gotten... have extra rice ready to go here. Okay, so you just have bundles of rice that is pre cooked in the fridge. Mm hmm. Okay. Because that's what I, I got to do today is I got to cook the rice. And I haven't cooked, I think, like I usually cook with my rice cooker, which I'm probably not going to do because that would take way too long because what? of how much rice that I'm cooking. Well, I have, I have a two-cup rice cooker. Okay. So I don't know if that would be faster because I, I want to make quite a bit more than two cups at a time or two cups. So I just got to really remember how to make rice on a stovetop. Is it two cups of rice? Uh, two cups of cooked rice. Huh. Not a very big rice a cooker. Rice, a rice cooker will cook rice better than your stovetop because they're made to... They Kick off at the some, right time and do all this. Well, no. Yeah. Some some of them have like moisture sensors and some of them have like weight sensors. Mine's a weight sensor one. So okay, so it'll know like when it's evaporated away all of the water and your and your rice has fully absorbed all the water. Gotcha. Because of that weight sensor. Then which is... I might just do that and just cook several batches in the rice cooker versus trying to do it on the stovetop. Yeah, a rice cooker will always give you better better quality rice. All right. And then I'll just cook a whole bunch. And use a... I'll, I'll play it by use, ear how much other stuff that I go. Use chicken broth when you make it. Like, put a little bit of bouillon in there. I'll have to look to see how big my rice cooker is. But yeah, if I do... Because it's, it's what, one cube per... It's one cube per cup. Oh, that's totally going to depend on your bullion. I use the Nor, the K N O R R, and that's I like have... a teaspoon per cup. So we have the water. cubes. Okay. I have to look to see how much I need. But what I could do is figure out how many times I'm going to do this, mix the bullion in with the water off to the side, and then just dump it in little bit by little bit once it's all mixed. 
Yep. And so you just use the bullion water instead of plain water to cook the rice with. Yep. All right. I am also what super seasonings fancy. do you use? I use uh, white pepper, white peppercorn ground up, and MSG, and that's pretty much it. Sesame okay. oil. Well, yeah, I yeah, saw the sesame. You just said add seasonings. So you got to yeah. remember, I'm coming from this to where I can't, I can't just assume stuff. I have to have everything in my head still, like. This is how much of this you use. This is how much of this you use. Mix this much with this much type of a thing. I haven't yeah. developed it's... anything beyond that yet. Fried fried rice is pretty forgiving. Um, I have some like set recipes that I use, like for myself. Yeah, like my I have one where I use like I use a duck egg. I use duck fat with the rice i have a shrimp broth that i use for my rice yeah i'm I'm fancy and then uh just be careful with that if we come up and visit because hill is really allergic to shellfish including shrimp yeah Yeah. um there's you can there's there's all sorts of things you can do i'm not gonna like uncle roger you with your rice while you're getting this figured out. But then I'm going to, one of these times I'm going to like, I'll set up the walk on the burner outside and make you like a good proper walk fried rice. I will blow your mind. I've got a field notebook that's blank that I think I'm going to use to start my own cookbook notes for doing um, stuff on the griddle. Just little things, little nuances about my griddle, about how I change things, about tastes, so that I can start building my own little... Because once I start cooking something, I don't need a recipe anymore. But to get started, I need structure to start, and then I can modify it myself, Yeah, if that makes sense. Trying to go off of a modified one to begin with fucks my head up so bad. (laughs) It's, it's really, it's, it's, it frustrates me because of how, how that works for me. But I'm the same way with art, with art stuff. You know, you give me a blank page and a pencil and I will stare at it for 10 hours and I will have no clue how to put anything that's in my head on paper. Yeah. It's just one of my, it's why I I love uh, editing video and doing video stuff. Because I'm manipulating content that's already there to make it better. Yeah. Coming up with something onto a blank page is really difficult for me. Which is really awesome in my Photoshop class. Because we're allowed to use AI generative images for pieces to put together. <laughs> so... Like I can think of something, I I can think of something and I know what it's supposed to like in my head. For example, we were doing a uh, disaster poster. So that poster that I had sent you, right? Mm-hmm. And it was, it was, to de- it was to depict a fictional disaster, but do a poster of it. And there were certain things. And I was like, okay, you know, what would be really cool is to have like something that is, neon cyberpunk with like a hint of synth wave UFO with an attacking octopus and a kitten that's defending people. And so I stare at a blank page and I'm like, I have no fucking clue how to even begin to create this or find stuff. (laughs) And then it pops up and I'm like, wait, I'm allowed to use elements from AI. And so every piece of that poster is elements that then I took. I like this piece of it. And I was able to take it out, mask away everything else. I like this piece of it. I like this piece of it. And so I ended up creating this thing that was, that was sourced from like eight or nine different images to make one cohesive piece, which is pretty much what he wanted us to do, finding stuff online. But utilizing AI for that kind of thing when you can't, when you're at that block 
or even if you want to do it all by hand yourself, just to get the information that's in your head to see a visual representation of it. Yeah. Freaking awesome. Yeah, but if I give you an empty griddle, you're like, uh... Well, because I, I have no frame of reference to start with yet. Do you want a hot dog? <laughs> That's chicken, chicken, and like my, my chicken thing. So, like, I, I make, I think I make, like, especially on the grill. I haven't tried on the grill yet, but on the <sighs> grill, I made a really good chicken breast. I figured out how to get really, really juicy, juicy, well-cooked chicken. Mm-hmm. Which for grilling is not, not everybody knows how to do that. Yeah. Or, or, you know, people struggle with that. But that took me a long time to figure out because I found someone that had a very specific, you do this, then this, then this. And then I adapted that to what my, the particulars of my grill. I'm going to have to readapt it again for the griddle. Mm -hmm. because I don't know how it's going to heat the same way or whatever, but I knew the exact place to put it. I, you know, I started seasoning it myself instead of doing the pre-bought seasoning. I figured some seasoning stuff out, which I think I'm going to start building some custom seasonings for custom things. That's, that's all I do anymore. So I've, I've slowly gotten rid of all of my like pre-mixed seasonings, except for a couple. I have, I have Tony Chattery's, Creole seasoning, and I have the Cajun two step from the um, Dale Cracker dude on TikTok because that shit yeah. is so good. I, I think I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue using what I've got, and then when it runs out, I'm gonna try to recreate it. Yeah, and then I'm gonna start changing stuff up. <laughs> That's but why I, like, I, got, go I got a pestle like and mortar my... that yeah, I'm gonna use to go. grind up. I've got some. Uh, He'll bought me some uh, pink sea salt. Hmm. So I'm going to ground that up fairly fine to use for stuff and see how it works. Um, it's it's a, not it's a, as salty as using like a kosher or an iodized salt. Because you're like, it's, it's pink it because pull, it has other minerals in it. It will still pull the flavor out. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you have to use like more of it than what you would with, with like a kosher salt. That's fine. Which you use more, you use less kosher than you do with like iodized table salt. Mm -hmm. It's like between the three table salt is in the middle. Kosher is really salty. And then this stuff will be kind of a less than, so it'll be fine. Yeah. I, I got yeah, into where I kind grind... of just use kosher salt all the time yeah i might i don't know i haven't decided i have this stuff so i'm gonna use it it's one of those things where it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna use this stuff and who knows i may like the extra taste that it gives to it because there is a slightly different taste to it yeah, and it may like not work with everything earthy. it may will be work with some things but not others yeah so yeah like it I, definitely definitely is the case like it works better with some things and not others So, you know, who knows? I might just have a bunch of different different spices for different things and mix them different and but I'll figure it out. Yeah. That's that's I, part of the whole process is just learning and doing things one step at a time, but I always start with a consistent base and then I I'll try to mimic it and then I'll slowly change stuff in and out. See how I like mm -hmm. this versus this. I I repurposed uh we had a blade style coffee grinder that we were using. And then I got a burr style that works so much better. It's like way more consistent grind. Than the, uh, uh, the pestle and mortar. No, with the, the blade, I, I have pestle and mortar still that I use. Depends I on how, like how much I'm doing. I've, I've gotten to where like a lot of times when I'm cooking, there's people over. So I'm cooking for like six to eight people. So it's, it's easier to use the, the coffee grinder to grind up my spice mixes because yeah. I, I dump everything in, push the button down, it holds more and kind of grinds through stuff a lot faster. 
but I do I like I do like using my mortar and pestle, especially if I'm like I, I like to put salt into garlic to like mince it. Yeah. Which works a lot better in the mortar and pestle than it does like on a on a cutting board. So Yeah. But hey, it's all working out and it's gonna be awesome. I think it'll be awesome. I think when I'm gonna use the, the mortar and pestle, I might graduate to that at some point, but for as I'm learning and figuring stuff out, I wanna do very small quantities to get yeah. the taste and get how it works right. Yep. Yeah, get it to where you like it. Yep. Do you have a do you have a kitchen scale? I don't have a kitchen scale. I have a package scale that I could use, I think. A small one. Mm. Package I do, scale. I do want to get a kitchen scale though. Yeah, because a kitchen scale will go one. down to like like a tenth or a hundredth of a gram. You know. I also have a dehydrator that's been kind of awesome to use for stuff. <laughs> yeah. I just dehydrated like four head of garlic and ground that up into a garlic powder. And it is the most potent smelling garlic powder I have ever smelled in my life. Yeah. That's yeah, so think, much better. I think I'm going to get, <clears throat> I'm going to get myself one of those like uh home spice rack things. And just have each individual stuff that I'm going to want to use before I start mixing and figuring the stuff out that way. I'm going to go yeah. somewhat scientific with it. And note exactly to, like like you said, the tenth of a gram of how much of each that I'm putting into something. And so if I need more of that flavor, less of that flavor, I'm not having to guess how much I need it in and out. Yeah. Especially if you, like, make something... And it's amazing, and you want to recreate it. Like yeah, I, I want to I keep know notes for a lot of my sauces and like my salsas, my hot sauces. Yep, I'm gonna do all of that. I'm gonna do because we've talked about doing <laughs> salsas, hot sauces, and a barbecue sauce as well. And I want to, yeah. I want to do spices. Yeah, I I've like been... I, I like a dry rub much more than I like a barbecue sauce on meats. Yeah. So I've been, I don't remember to show you what I've been doing in my spice cabinet. Cause I've been, I've been consolidating everything into the, into same jars. Yeah. And I think a, a day or two ago, I think I just decided I'm going to get the, uh, you know, the little ball, uh, jam jars. They're yeah. like th two and a half inches in diameter and like maybe three or four inches tall. I think I'm just going to go buy a bunch of those and the reusable plastic lids and replace all of my spice jars with those and then I can self-label them. Because I've got like 30-some different spices in there. And it, it, got, it got frustrating as hell trying to like sort through and figure out what like pulling stuff out like okay what's this jar what's that jar pull stuff out what's that oh there's that forgot i had that yep you know and, and yeah getting to where i have everything in the same style of jar with labels on it and then i'm gonna build some little racks so i can like pull it out and see everything that's in it at one time without having to like pull them up out of the spots. But we have a ridiculous amount of spices. Like we have, we have a ridiculous amount. We have stuff that isn't normally used for a lot of things. Yeah. And I think what I'm going to do as well is, and since we got the garden stuff is I want to start growing a, everything that I need, unless I absolutely can't grow it here. I want to have <laughs> everything grown and be completely sustainable that way with it. Yeah. But for when the, for when the deep state takes over, just cause I want to be sustainable. It's cool to grow shit. Yeah.
The wife's good at it. Mm -hmm. I managed to kill plastic parent plants, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on a, been printing the spice tower for in my kitchen. So I have like this it's like stackable little pots that drain through each other into a tray on the bottom yeah and then they they stack up so i can like put a crap ton of them all in a big tower oh that's cool and i've been working on like slowly printing out more of those and getting um getting different spices that go in them so Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, hopefully I'll just have, like, a tower of fresh herbs and shit in there. Yeah, I figured I'll, I'll figure out the how to dry them properly, then how to, you know, we'll be gr I'll grind them all up and get them in separate little containers, and then I can start measuring and putting things together for spices. Mm-hmm. I'll probably spend about a week studying what spices does what for flavor and what herbs do what for flavors. And then I can kind of <laughs> build flavor. I got to someone somewhere is going to have a really good cheat sheet for flavor profiles for all this stuff. I just, I haven't looked yet. I wonder if America's test kitchen has that. I don't know. Should we talk about what's been in the news? What? What's in the news? That uh, private business submarine that imploded down that was checking out the Titanic? I don't know. Did you hear about that? Uh, yeah. It seems stressful. Like It seems like they're under a lot of pressure. Yeah. It was definitely under a lot of pressure. <laughs> Seriously, man, how could you sink so low with that joke? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I have a small rant about that, but it's not going to be too deep. You but know I what think that is... I plan on doing is, like, in about a month or so, I'm going to go buy some, uh, some Atlantic salmon and just eat Atlantic salmon for... Uh, you know, maybe another month. <laughs> so, by proxy, I'll be eating the rich. There we go. I think the most upsetting thing about that whole situation was the reason why they did all of their testing and all of their dives in international waters was to circumvent safety regulations of governments. Mm -hmm. they had fired people who had come forward warning that the the corners they were cutting for the sake of innovation because they're they're a group of people that believe that regulations stifle innovation and so they're not really necessary <laughs> uh yeah this is what happens and i know and the thing that worries me about it is Musk is trying to push the point of doing that with SpaceX stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole, the pad blowing up for Starship and sending shit everywhere is a prime example of that. And yeah. knowing, knowing that his mentality is the same of why they move stuff out of California into Texas because the regulations were less than they don't have the safety regulations that they do elsewhere. It's, it's setting up for a recipe of horrible disaster and it's going to come back to bite them at some point. I don't know when, but it will. Yeah. And it's going to kill people. Yep. And it's that mentality that, you know, we, we learned, I learned in the mean, Navy years ago. Gonna. Yeah. We learned this week that it does. Yep. It did. Well, 
we we had a we had a saying in the navy that every regulation every safety warning every don't do this is written in blood because mm-hmm. the government doesn't especially the military doesn't create things until something happens and it's forced to <laughs> so when it and especially you know when you're talking about nautical stuff submarines ships there's a reason why a navy that's been around longer than the country has is kind of the go-to playbook on best practices for that shit it's because it's all been written in blood Mm -hmm. you know plenty of people have died to create that safety book and to ignore it because of innovation, that just means you're a lazy innovator. <clears throat> yeah. If if you have to play with people's lives to innovate, then you're innovating wrong. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing with, with small businesses, you know. You know, claiming that you can't pay your workers a living wage as a small business owner because it would run you out of business means that you're running a failed business. I If you dude, can't afford to pay I your say workers that all the fucking time. If you can't if you are not running a business successful enough to pay your workers the wages that they deserve for the work that they do so that they can live off of what you're doing, then you have failed as a business and you should not be a business. Because Mm -hmm. all you're doing at that point is exploiting others for your own personal gain. Yeah. And it's the same, it's the same when you start ducking regulations for shit. Yep. You're trying to exploit things for your own gain. Yeah. And... You know, if if you have to duck around safety regulations for the sake of innovation, then you done fucked up with innovation. <laughs> so it just means you're lazy. Yep. And I know that's going to be somewhat unpopular for a certain demographic of people, but I don't give a shit. Yeah. Oh, well. I'm of all the things that I've seen though, like the controller was like, didn't bother me because <laughs> I understood. No. I was like, that seems normal. Like using an off the shelf controller and do you routing why, your controls. Do you know why I would trust that than a custom built controller? Because on, got this Xbox controller that I'm holding in my hand. When was the first Xbox released? Mm. Mm. Hang on, let me look that up real quick. Hey Google, when was the first Xbox released? 2001. November 15th, 2001. According to Wikipedia, the Xbox launched in North America on November 15th, 2001. To find out more, look for the link in your Google Home or Google Assistant app. Thank you. Okay, so 2001. You're very welcome, which, Cheesy. Which means that a brand new Xbox controller has 22 years, almost 22 years of research and development and testing and improvements and reliability tests done. 22 years into this controller. That Hold is, on now. or more, at least 22 since it was released. Because the Xbox controller, going from generation to generation, they didn't just throw out the plans for the old. They improved and upgraded. They were specifically using a Logitech controller, and Logitech has been around since 81. Well, then there we go. So now we have 42 40 years. years. Yeah. Or, you know, 40 years plus of... <coughs> extensive in-depth technology pushed into it 
someone yeah. that is that cavalier with safety building their own custom thing fuck that i will use what i have available and what i know is going to work of all the things on that so the vessel that was probably the thing i trusted the most probably yeah saw. and i don't i, I don't mean, really know shit about like building aquatic vehicles or whatever but I know a little bit about technology, and I know that Logitech does make quality parts. Yeah, they do. I mean, I I trust that my my mouse is a Logitech for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I've used Logitech stuff. My my yoke and keyboard are Logitech. I I. I I don't use a Logitech keyboard. I have a couple Logitech keyboards here at the house, but I don't use it because I have a little custom thing here. But, you know, I trust Logitech a lot. Yeah. And especially when it comes to paraphernalia, I trust them. I also trust Microsoft <laughs> quite a bit, which is why I, my, my Xbox, or my, my controller for my computer is an Xbox controller. Yeah. That and it's the Master Chief edition which just looks sick. <laughs> and I prefer the Xbox layout than the PlayStation Logitech layout. Yeah. I like having the left thumbstick higher. I don't know, it just sits that's... better in my hand. That's that's a that's totally a personal preference thing. Yeah. That's that's also why I like um, Ryobi, which is why I got you on the Ryobi. Dude, that whacker is so fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like you could go, you could go buy a, uh, you know, a cheap ass Walmart thing, the well, Wego what or whatever. I I had a Works before W O R X. Yeah, it Works. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. It worked for what it needed to. The batteries didn't last for shit, but it wasn't that powerful. I couldn't get through I couldn't get through the ivy. Yeah. This thing cut through that ivy. Well, of course I also had the cutting blade on it type of thing because I bought a new head. <laughs> Instead of having the bump head on it, I bought a different head that I could swap out with blades or I could run line pre-cut line through in the loop. Which I just bought some really hefty line recently so I could just rip through other stuff. I gotta be careful mm -hmm. with it, but you know, I just bought some really hefty line recently. I'm very happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, and Ryobi's been around since nineteen forty three. Yeah. There's something to be said for that. Yeah. And when you're when you look at their their eighteen volt stuff, which is like their um you know their their like shop power tools range. Yeah. Um, it's had the same battery system since the seventies or eighties. I would like it's had, <clears throat> have, if my, have if the that. stuff that I have now breaks, I'll go to it, but I've got black and Decker for that right now. I'm happy with that. I'm fine. Yeah. With black and Decker. Yeah. Well, yeah. Black and Decker is good, but like, <clears throat> The stuff I've seen with Black and Decker and Craftsman and and like all the, some of the other brands was they changed battery styles enough times. I I was I was trying to find a battery for one of my dad's drills, and Craftsman makes a like twelve, a sixteen, an eighteen, and a twenty volt. Like they make they make like four different systems for their drills, and then. You go and look at the Ryobi stuff, and they have they have eighteen volt, which is that's all their their like hand tool stuff. Yep, and it's all interchangeable. And there's a like two hundred fifty tools that you can that just swap and work. And the the batteries work in tools from thirty forty years ago. You know, I have a couple of tools that I've gotten off of like Craigslist that they're probably as old as me. But they still work, and they work yeah. with the new batteries. And you can't—that's something you just can't—you can't do that with other tool brands. 
that was one of the big things that took me to them. Like this is this is cool. Like I, they've said and they've said they will not change their battery style. Like they're just not going to do it. Yep. And that's good. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. I'm glad about that. I mean, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and they're doing the same same thing with their forty forty volt, which is like the the trimmer that you got. That battery works on anything in the forty volt range. So like a trimmer, like a a blower. They have like cultivators you can use in gardens. Uh, they have mowers. Like they, there's a writing mower that works on those forty volt batteries. Like granted, you need like three of them, but you, there's a writing mower. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. runs on those batteries. Well, they they're also just they just released those the eighty eighty volt line as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're getting into doing some bigger things like bigger zero turns. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at some of those. Seven seven thousand dollars for a mower to do my yard. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was the was Real like, Easy Plus that I bought to swap out the head with the Real Easy Plus. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, that's awesome. I just got to order more... Uh, <sighs> I just got to order more blades for it. That's all. Yeah. But I get an eight-pack for, what, 17 or 18 bucks. I just have to get it shipped because it's not available anywhere in Fort Wayne. Hmm. In stock, 56 miles away. Where is that? Which, which store is that that's in stock at? Is that Coldwater? Yeah. 12 in stock, Coldwater. <laughs> could so. come for a visit. I could. If I wasn't busy tomorrow, I probably would. No, I'm vis- I'm busy tomorrow too. Oh yeah, because I have to do all the. I'm busy today too. Shit, we got to figure out when you can walk me through this. As soon as we wrap up. I can't. As soon as we wrap up, I got stuff I got to do. Shit. Okay. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. It will be out before Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're gonna wrap this thing up. We should be back Wrap to our regular up. scheduled programming. We're also going to be recording an extra episode here at some point. And uh, just to have in the back burner. So this doesn't happen again. Yeah. Anyway. We'll have another have another lost episode that we'll lose somewhere. This one we won't lose. <laughs> this one we uh, won't lose. Yep. All right, man. We'll see you guys next week. Later. Bye.